All right, looks like we're live. Okay, All so right. everybody, uh, uh, welcome to uh, tonight's uh, live broadcast with uh, myself, Jeff Freeman, and we have Jack in the wings. Good and we also, good evening. And we also have our very special guest, Aaron Taylor, Dr. Aaron Taylor, by the way, uh, archaeologist on Oak Island. Welcome. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited about having you here. Fantastic. And uh, um, I know that uh, you're going to have a lot of good things to uh, tell us about here tonight. What we like to do when we start off the show is we like to give a few shout outs to some of the guests that have come on. Uh, whoops, let me turn that down. I always forget to do that. Turn my turn my thing down here. Okay. So I want to be able to see the chat so I can shout out to a few people out here. Laurie's with us tonight. How you doing, Laurie? Glad you're with us. Uh, I'm looking for some of the names here. Let's see. Let's see. How do I make that? All right. But we're really excited to have Aaron with us here tonight. And um, we're going to have some get an education about some of the things that he's done, as well as uh, some of the work that he's done off Oak Island and on Oak Island and his educational background and stuff like that. So uh, basically, I'd like to just open it up, Aaron, if I could. Um, and again, welcome. Thank you for being here with us tonight. And I'd like to ask you a little bit about, like, what got you started in archaeology? I mean, was was this a passion as a kid? Or like, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, this, for me, it was a lifelong affliction, uh, passion, whatever you want to call it. Um, my mom will tell, tell stories about... Um, and oh, we're getting a little bit of an echo there. Okay, all right now. I, I goofed. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah. So, um, you know, as a young boy, I'd spend most of my time in the woods. I grew up in the country. I'd always be turning over stones and logs and mm -hmm. collecting stuff. And when I was six years old, I opened up my own little company called uh, Bones and Stones. Really? That's and sold stuff to my parents. <laughs> Um, so it's been a lifelong passion. Um, I got away from it in my older years, and I became a social worker in Toronto. Really? But it kept calling me back. And finally, about 14 years ago, I said, now or never. And I went back, um, did an undergraduate degree in anthropology, mm -hmm. followed that with a master's degree in archaeology uh, at St. Mary's in Halifax on historical archaeology, specifically the, the uh, French or Acadians who came to Nova mm -hmm. Scotia, the early colonial period. And um, <clears throat> after that, I decided that I loved working with people. I loved teaching. And uh, I went and got my PhD in um, the Mi'kmaq history pr prior to the European arrival. Wow. So found it fascinating. Um, it was six years of my life, but uh, I was working, raising a family, but uh, you know, it was an amazing experience and uh, I'm very happy. And my wife is also that it's done. So, <laughs> uh, I've been teaching since 2015, uh, running field schools here in Nova Scotia. And in 2017, I started a field school in Cuba on a 19th century slave plantation. Wow. And um, so bringing the neat thing is I bring uh, 12 Canadian students, although it, it doesn't have to be. We've had we had one American student. We had two Chinese students, um, but we dig alongside Cuban students and Cuban archaeologists. Mm -hmm. So it's a real collaboration and, um, you know, trip of a lifetime. So if there's any students, if you know any students out there who might like to participate, um, they should contact me course with COVID, uh, we had to cancel um, the field schools this past year, but with the vaccine and I don't know, it might be tough to get one going in 2021, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely in 2022, we're aiming for it. And we're also starting one in Peru. So lots of neat stuff, lots of interesting stuff. The COVID is what actually led me to Oak Island. Um, I did uh, one episode last year uh, great experience. Uh, they treated me like gold. So my field schools got canceled. They said, uh, Aaron, could you come help David McGinnis for a couple weeks? And I said, sure. Um, I went after those couple weeks. They said, 
interested in staying on for the whole season? And I said, sure. So absolutely amazing experience. And, um, you know, there's a silver lining with every cloud, isn't something like that. So mm -hmm. I lost my field schools, but I got Oak Island. So, yeah. Wow. Who contacted yeah. you? Who contacted you the first time about going to Oak Island? Um, I work with Dr. Ian Spooner in the Earth Sciences Department, mm. and uh, they were looking at an anomaly. And uh, he said, "You know, Aaron, I don't know about this. Uh, I'd love a second pair of eyes." So I came down for the day, um, and uh, yeah, great experience. I don't know how much help I was. Um, you know, the, the neat thing is, what I find interesting, what's frustrating and interesting is on Oak Island, you see things you've never seen before. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you're asked, what is that? I don't know. You know, constantly, no one knows, no one's seen this before. So mm -hmm. um, it's exciting, it's frustrating. Um, you want to have an answer, but sometimes the only honest answer is, I don't know. Yep. And no, neither does anyone else. <laughs> but we use archaeological methodology and uh, we stick with it. And um, sometimes we get good results. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't. Yeah. yeah have you heard of Oak Island before, before this? Oh, oh yes. Uh, I'm from Ontario, but uh, my parents are both from Nova Scotia oh. and um, they're school teachers. So I spent every summer in Nova Scotia. And, um, you know, everyone knows about Oak Island. I've heard stories. I read a book when I was much younger. Um, so I've always heard about Oak Island. Uh, I'm also naturally a skeptic. Um, you know, I, I, I'm all about the evidence. So, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I knew about Oak Island. I've heard both sides of the story. And now it's been amazing to actually be part of it and uh, see from my own eyes what's happening. Right. Yeah, we talked to Laird, um, and we had when we had him on, and he he said that uh, when they originally reached out to, you know, they were looking for an archaeologist. This is back in the days of Dan and uh, um, uh, Dan Blankenship and Fred Nolan. And they were looking to have an archaeologist come on the island and actually do some work in that field. And so they were reaching out. And they said, he said, nobody wanted to do it because an archaeologist is not a treasure hunter. And he was very adamant about that. And I said, so, and I even asked him, I said, so what do you think is on the island? Do you think there's a treasure? And he goes, I won't go there. He goes, because we deal in facts. We deal in what we dig up and what proves certain things. We're not looking for treasure. We're not looking for anything. We just find this and put the pieces together and come up with a conclusion. Do you, do you feel that same way? Absolutely. I mean, and I, you know, methodology, methodology, methodology. Mm -hmm. It's slow. It's painstaking. That's why there's not 30 archaeology shows on TV. Right. It's slow. You know, inch by inch, trowel scoop by trowel scoop, we do it. Right. And uh, we follow the evidence. And, right. um, you know, it's not my job to um determine if there's a treasure there or not my job is to what is this um and just go little by little by little by little and um yeah you can't start thinking uh treasure hunt you have to come in with an open mind but you can't be biased if you go in going i'm gonna find the treasure that'll yeah. cloud your work right i go in going there's nothing here every project i do there's nothing here Yep. until i see something okay that's mm -hmm. something then i say is that natural or man-made human-made okay if it's not natural right. and it's human-made then i say what is it when i figure out what yep. it is then i try and figure out how old it is and it's just step by step by step by step yeah that makes total so, sense and that's and exactly that, that's what, what i was wondering mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, and that's yeah. and that's exactly what then, Aaron, you know what uh, what he said too. Laird did. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, no, and that's why we have great historians, Doug Crawl and and Charles. Um, so we, you know, we also hand the baton off to them. Um, I did it for this 
what's happening around here at this period of time. So we're mm -hmm. always collaborating with the historians, um, with um, <clears throat> scientists, with the earth scientists. And when we all collaborate together, then we get a more comprehensive idea about what's happening. Right, exactly. That's that's and that's good. And that that shows that, you know, you and, and you know, folks like you and Laird, you have integrity in that. And that's something that uh, we respect very much and something that I respect about the show. I know Jack and I have talked about that before, about the fact that we we feel that, you know, you look at a reality show like, you know, that many that are on TV and you wonder how much of that is scripted. And that's one of the things that we have felt about you know, this show, The Curse of Oak Island, it is not scripted. Do you concur with that? It's absolutely not scripted. I mean, more times than not, you know, you have cameras on you and, and you know, you know, you'd know you'd love to have some great meaty thing for them to show. But most mm -hmm. of the time it's like, no, there's, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's not old or it's nothing there. And they, they're like, okay, move on. Let's keep going. Yep. Um, most of the time, and of course it's not shown on TV, but most of the time there's nothing mm -hmm. there or it, right. it's not consequential or it's very modern. Um, mm -hmm. but no, there's never pressure to ad lib, you know, to create things. It's what you see is what's happening. And, um, right. you know, that's yeah. what, you know, I, I was, I was worried that I'd be pressured into talking about treasure, treasure, treasure. And there was never that pressure. It was Aaron. There's something there, and you please take a look at it. If it's nothing, fine. If it's something, then please help us help us to to tell what it is. That's fantastic. It, yeah, but I, I've seen on on Facebook on Facebook pages, um, people think it's staged or um, <clears throat> or uh, people have salted the units or put things there, but it it's absolutely not true. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, are you talking? And by the way, me and Jeff to talk about the Laginas. That's just, that's just not their way at all. It's all it's all fact driven. They want not only do they want the treasure, but they want the history behind everything. Right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Rick. I Rick mm -hmm. says it almost every day. The story uh, is just as important as the treasure. You know, I'm interested in telling an accurate story and. Right. Um, you know, I've never met anyone like Rick. He is a wonder of nature. He is a hard, hard working person. And, um, you know, he's right down in the mud with us and he, he doesn't stop. And he wants the truth. He's not, he has no time for BS. Um, you know, he, he is, he is driven to find out the truth. And there's, as you can see on the show, there's many avenues that he's taking. He looks, you know, he takes information from theorists. He takes information from earth scientists, from archaeologists. You know, he, he's very open to this information, but, um, you know, he has no time for, for nonsense. And right. I, I respect that. And that's how I work. too. And I get that impression as well. I think all of us do when we watch the show. And I think that's one of the appeals to the show is the fact that they are. You get that sense that they are real people and they want to get to the bottom of this. They're not going to stage anything because that's what somebody told me once <clears throat> about the cross, you know, the lead cross they found in Smith's Cove. And they said, oh, somebody planted that there. And I'm like, no. And they said, well, how can you be sure? And I said, well, honestly, I can't be sure, but in watching the show for at that point six seasons or whenever it was they found it season five i think watching the show up to that point i felt that i knew them well enough to know that they were not going to do that they were not going to stage they were not going to put something there to find later oh look what we found so and they that are, just means so much more to it yeah no they are all honorable people like mm -hmm. it's the fa it really is they talk about it as a fellowship mm -hmm. like we yeah. pull for each other we hope when you know gary it's, uh, find something with this detector we all pull for it and when it turns out to be nothing or a tin can or something we're all just like you know yeah. it's just a roller roller coaster of emotion for us and these are genuine emotions yeah. i mean we're putting in 10 12 hour days every day mm -hmm. like we are worn I've out i've heard but, that uh, you know it, and it is and there's more lows than their highs but the highs are pretty sweet when we get them and uh yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I get that impression too. Now, a couple more things about uh, your your past. Uh, one thing that I was looking at, <clears throat> it talks about that you can hold a cat category A, B, and C permits. What what exactly does that mean? A, so what are, Nova, what are the, yeah, go ahead. In, in Nova Scotia, we have a permitting system. I think it's in every province in, in Canada. And uh, you have to be registered archaeologist. Uh, to hold all three. A permit A is, um, a, you don't have to be an archaeologist to get a permit A. That's just going to take a look, uh, just a, a walk around mm -hmm. um, uh, over a potentially uh, sensitive site. Okay. Uh, a B is a research permit. That's what I mostly take out. That's what people at universities mo mostly take out. Mm -hmm. And a category C permit is what most of the archaeologists do in Nova Scotia, and that's uh, for people putting in a highway. They need an archaeologist to monitor it, oh, or they're putting in a foundation. So that that most of the private companies take care of that sort of thing. I see. So to, before you can dig on a site, you have to apply. Uh, it's a, a not a lengthy application, but it's you have to clearly say what you're going to do, why you're going to do it, and how you're going to do it. You submit it to the province. Sometimes the province says yes. Sometimes they say no, hmm. um, yeah. you know, especially for the research ones, you have to have a good reason. Right. Uh, Archaeology is very destructive. You can't undo something that you've excavated. Right. So right. you have to have a really good reason of why you're going to do it. And, um, you know, I, I think that's the best way to do it. They can't just be handing permits all over the place. Absolutely. But, yeah. uh, in your yeah. permits, you've, have you ran into trouble this year getting permits because of COVID? <clears throat> Uh, no, it's it's been a little slower, um, but no, they've done a great job. The the province has on issuing permits. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I spent most of my time on Oak Island, so I didn't take out many permits. Um, but I, no, it's just a, maybe a week extra longer than usual, but okay. not a big deal at all. That's not good. a big deal at all. That's good. Yeah, we know. That, and when we talked to Laird, <clears throat> excuse me. When we talked to Laird, he was talking about the island and the fact that on the, I guess it's on the, if you take the east side of the swamp, you don't need to have a permit, but on the west side of the swamp, you do. And I guess that had to do with Dunfield and some of the things that he had done to destroy that area. What do you, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, the eastern knoll, the eastern section has been bulldozed, blasted, dug up. Um, so, Unfortunately, a lot of the context has been destroyed. In archaeology, we talk about an undisturbed context is what you want. <clears throat> um, yeah, and it's just been so heavily uh, disturbed right. that they don't require permitting on it. <clears throat> For now, that might change. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it changed. Right, yeah. Um, but, but for now, um, I don't want to say any more, but I wouldn't be surprised if it got changed. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting, and I know we that that, that caught me by surprise. There now it says broadcast. Now yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we're we're back now. Sorry, I don't know what happened there, folks. We it, we lost the uh, we lost it there for a second. Um, hopefully, you can see us again. Um, uh, let's see. I forgot where I was at. Oh, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about in your in your past was the um, uh, the work that you had done, um, and it talked about historical sites. This is some of the things that you're uh, qualified for: historical sites, pre-contact sites, and also maritime. So I want, if you could, what you know, I think I understand what historical sites are, but what does that exactly entail? And also the um, the pre-contact sites. So historical is the is the period after which european contact was made mm -hmm. so you know in the in in uh the caribbean it's columbus 1492 mm -hmm. in canada <clears throat> i mean cartier in 1535 you had cabot in 1498 john cabot um so it's it it demarcates the time to prior to European contact and then after pre-European contact. Okay, I see. So pre-contact archaeology in the Maritimes is looking at the ancestral Mi'kmaq. Um, we have a site an hour's drive from my house that's that's dated to about 13, just under 13,000 years ago. 
I mean, think about that. That's three times older than the pyramids of Giza. So, you know, they have a long, long period of time on uh, in the maritime provinces. Wow. And uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, there's lots of Nova Scotians don't know that. Um, one of the oldest sites is, is right here in our backyard. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I love the pre-contact stuff. There's no, there's no maps to look at. There's no journals. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot harder, mm -hmm. um, but I find it fascinating. I mean, I love both periods. Who doesn't like to look at a map and oh, yeah, be in yeah. the archives? But yeah. I, I also love the pre-contact. And they have a really interesting story to tell, too. And I think it's been far too neglected. Um, and uh, there's not a lot of people doing research in it. And uh, I, I just think it's an amazing story that needs to be told. Absolutely. You have to be a lot more careful, I would believe, probably when you're doing a site like that also, that you really are flying, you're almost flying blind a little bit, aren't you? Yeah, it, it is challenging. Uh, I definitely collaborate with the Mi'kmaq communities. I invite them uh, to participate. Um, so I'm working closely with them. And uh, I mean, it's it's their history that we're talking about. So, um, you know, but it, it does pose a lot of challenges. Um, but I, I, I love challenges, so. Well, Oak Island is a big challenge. From yeah, it is. <laughs> Oak Island is, yeah, a big challenge with lots of questions. Yep, and one which, of the things, too, that I, and I, one of our uh, members jumped on this, too, when you had mentioned the Mi'kmaq, and I, and I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, the Mi'kmaq, yeah. Um, yeah. but one of them jumped up and asked about that, and that's something that has intrigued me, and I know, and many of our members talking about the Mi'kmaqs. What can you tell us about what you've discovered about, you know, them? I mean, is there, you know, I know that could probably go on for hours, and we probably don't want to do that, but, no, no. you know, tell us a little bit about the, the Mi'kmaqs. Um, well, so the Mi'kmaq, um, they, they, they've occupied the whole entire province of Nova Scotia, PEI, parts of New Brunswick. They were everywhere. Um, you know, when, you know, whenever people came, either the depositors or the searchers, um, I always say you couldn't sneeze without the Mi'kmaq knowing about it. Yep. Um, they were everywhere. So, um, I think it's an avenue that might be very interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, that's not a decision for me, um, right. but it is definitely something that I, I find really interesting. So, um, you know, you, I was looking at also in your background and I just wanted to mention for our viewers that you had talked about that you are, you have a BA in anthropology, you have yes. an MA in historical archeology, span and right. now you have your PhD in pre-contact archaeology and that's fantastic yeah. i applaud you for going to that and you said you got you started all this like 14 years ago to actually gain the education to get these yes that, that's why <laughs> that's wow. fantastic especially while you're trying to raise a family that's that's incredible. yeah yeah it was a lot of sacrifice for my kids and my wife um you know missed uh missed a lot of family events because i had to finish a chapter but yep. um it was a passion of mine and um and now I'm doing what I love, and yep. it's hard to beat that. You were also down in Cuba, um, and I seen that uh, you talked about the Maritimes, and then it, also Cuba. So what uh, what's what's going on? You mentioned it briefly earlier, but what's what do you have happening down in Cuba? So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we're working with the cabinet of archaeology in Havana, and. Um, I asked if you know they'd be interested in uh, interested in working on a, a slave plantation site because you know it's not well known, but we had slavery in Nova Scotia. You know we didn't have the plantation system like they did in the southern states, but right. we had slavery. It was alive and well in Nova Scotia, and um, you know looking at the transatlantic slave trade, um, I wanted to bring uh, you know that history alive for for Canadians. Uh, you know. A lot of us Canadians think that we were just the good abolitionists, but it's not true. We had a, a period of slavery as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of archaeology. There's a couple sites in Nova Scotia, but, um, you know, I wanted to really have the students experience what it was like to be on a slave plantation. Wow. And uh, the Cuban said, 
will agree to collaborating with you if it is a true collaboration um because they have lots of offers but it's we you know the universities we want to come down and do our own thing and they're not interested in that and neither am i so i st mary's we made up formal agreement um and so we've done it for four years and um we we bring the students down and uh I have them walk up the long road up to the to the mansion house and behind mm -hmm. the mansion house is the barracks. And you know, it's students and everyone <clears throat> is happy and they're talking and, but when you get off the little bus and you walk up and I say, this is the last bit of freedom that these people had before yeah. they entered the gates. Yep. It just gets very quiet and it's a really um, impactful moment of reflection for the students for everyone participating. And then you come up into this beautiful um, plantation and it's you, you have to remind yourself of all the horrific things that happened there. And right. so the idea is to tell the story of these people who were enslaved by finding their material culture, the things they made, the things they used. Right, oh, that's um, fantastic, yeah. My favorite story, and I can just do it quickly. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> A student um, was excavating in the barracks where they all lived. And she found a, an American, uh, 1861 American coin with a hole in it. So really? it was made into a necklace. Oh, wow. But what happened in 1861 in the United States? Civil oh, War. Boy, your sister. Yeah. The US Civil War. And what was it over? A good part of it was over slavery. Yep. So here you can imagine that this, this wow. person was holding out hope and she had made this into a necklace and you know still thinking about it it chokes me up and it was it was probably the the most important or i don't want to say important i hate comparing wow. artifacts but the one that impacted me probably the most i've ever found wow um so absolutely uh, it's a great experience and and now we've opened it to the public um we've taken three trips down with adults ranging in from 14 to 81 Mm -hmm. um uh, so that people can get their own taste of archaeology get their hands dirty and and uh so we spend a week digging and then we sp spend a week in havana um cleaning the artifacts going out to uh historical tours cultural tours events um yeah it's it's the highlight of my year and uh, wow, i bet that's something. and it's open to americans so if, <laughs> if there's anyone out there once this covid resolves itself a little promoting but uh once we get this COVID 19 under control um yeah. you know maybe i'll see some of the viewers here uh join me yeah i was gonna say be careful what you ask for because you might get a whole bunch of get a couple. that'd be I'd great be I would, I, you know and that's something that you know i have to say it's one of those things that you look at when you're as you're growing up or whatever going through your life and you're thinking and i want and i love to watch these shows you so i know you say it, they're boring and, and i guess over the scheme of things it would be but i love to watch tv shows about archaeology and the things that they find even with they're down there with the little brushes and they're finding this little piece and they get excited about a piece of pottery i do too because it's oh, telling the story like you said and great that's, to hear that's yeah great to and hear. I, I just that just fascinates me and so you know, and, and and I want to segue this right into to back to Oak Island again now and sure. talk about Lot 15 because, you know, watching you guys down there, you know, with the little trowels and you're, and you're working and stuff in there, um, that's it, I, it really does fascinate me because, like you said, it's telling the story. Each little thing you find, like the you're finding the pieces of carbon from the the burnt wood and the things like that down there, each one of those tells a story. Uh, but before actually before I get to Lot 15. And you may have brushed on this already talking about, I guess you were introduced to the island during the COVID and this was um, through Dr. Spooner, I guess. And that's really interesting that you were connected with Dr. Spooner. Um, so what was your experience like the first time you came to the island as an, had you ever been there before? No, before no, okay. no. Um, I went last, I think it was like season seven, episode 18. So it was near the end. Uh, it was getting co cold, um, but it was a beautiful sunny day, and um, they had me want, you know, um, there was something going on in the swamp area, oh, and yeah. Ian couldn't put his finger on it, and um, so he just asked for a second pair of eyes, and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, in Cuba, um, I'd seen a field that they had um, 
that they had leveled with with stone and rubble this mm -hmm. big field and they did it so that they could get carts carrying heavy bags of sugar and coffee uh -huh. across it right wow. so ian knew about that story i told him so he said aaron do you want to come take a look at this and um that the paved area mm -hmm. and i said sure why not um i don't know what good i can do but uh and uh you know i said it on the show that i, I don't believe it's natural right um yep. there's too many things about it that that didn't appear natural to me mm -hmm. um but yeah it was a great and you know they treat you like gold um and uh so when they asked me to come back to help for two weeks in lot 15 mm -hmm. i said sure you know and this last then i ended up staying the whole season so yeah, that's great so so as far as the the swamp goes and i remember that episode now that you brought that up and it, it reminded me uh seeing you come out there and was talking about the eye now many of us you know had this big uh thing and i still kind of do in the back of my mind and want to believe that the eye has a bigger story to tell um so and then when you went out there and you were looking at the the rock formations out there and you found the blue clay and I believe, you know, I don't know. And again, I know that, you know, again, I and, and as for our viewers, you all know very well that we have to be very careful what we talk about when it comes to Oak Island, simply because, you know, Dr. Taylor here is restricted by his NDA of what he can talk about. But is there anything about the blue clay and the fact that you mentioned it was a mine for blue clay or I think it was you that had said that is is that still hold true? Is Can you talk about that at all? Um. I mean, I can talk that I've never seen clay of that type before. I mean, clay was used as um, caulking, mm -hmm. uh, windows, and 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 such. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't spend a lot of time with the eye. Um, Doctor Spooner would have a lot more to say about it than I than okay. I could. I'd love to get him on too. <laughs> um, you know, he loves to talk, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sent a friend I, request, but he hasn't gotten back to me yet. So. Okay, hopefully he will. Yeah, no, he'd be great. Um, I love working with uh, Doctor Spooner. Um, so, so there's not a lot I can say about the eye other than it's it's it's, it's a real curiosity. Yeah. Did you guys ever went the road? And maybe you can't answer this. Did you ever get a date for the road of when it was put in? Do you think the Stone Paveway? The Stone Paveway. Yeah. No. Okay. Not to yeah, my, okay. not to my knowledge. Um, again, I, I sort of, although we're we're one big team, we are quite spread out, and mm -hmm. I'm doing my own thing over one area, and Laird's in another area, and and uh, Gary's off, and Jack doing something else. So, I I get a lot of the information from watching the show, just like you guys do, <clears throat> like. All right um so yeah, I, I think Ian will talk. There, yeah. <clears throat> yeah um dr spooner would be would be more able to talk about the eye than i can so in that that paveway too just real briefly on that and then we'll jump over to lot 15 but um you know when we all saw that on the show you know at first you know you know and again i know that a lot of people were thinking this and i did too at first thinking okay rocks okay big deal there's a bunch of rocks down there you know rocks are underground we know that but then as they as they moved a whole section and then you saw the different layers of those rocks and then they did a little thing on the show where they did kind of like color coded them so you could see the smaller rocks and bigger rocks and bigger rocks or you know how they were layered uh -huh. that jumped out right there well glaciers okay. don't do that yeah. no so exactly what, what moves rocks people move rocks and glaciers move rocks that size right right and the fact that Dr. Spooner found some organic under one, mm -hmm. if a glacier had to move that, you wouldn't find the organics. So right. that's why it's painstaking, mm -hmm. but that's why just the tiniest little clue right. can tell us so much. And that's why, you know, archaeologists, we're down on our hands and knees with a tiny little trowel looking at every speck of dirt because it could be the tiniest thing that tells us the most. Exactly right. There's, yeah, it's, yep. it's, it's interesting. I don't know if your viewers have heard of Lansom Meadows. I have uh, the Viking site in, in Newfoundland, the only Viking site located in North America. <clears throat> but they were able to determine it was a Viking site when someone found a tiny 
uh, iron um, needle. So, you know, how easy would that have been? Literally a needle in a haystack. Yeah, exactly. So you don't know what, um, how small, it doesn't have to be big. Right. That can just open up the whole story. And that's why, that's why, you know, if you go in there blasting with a shovel, you're going to miss it. Yep. Right? Yep. So, and that's exactly what Rick says. The one thing. And, and for that site, it, that was the one thing, right? Yeah. The aha moment. Yeah. The aha moment. Thank you, Jack, very much. That's exactly yeah. right. The aha moment. Yeah. When yeah. they found that, that's very interesting. I did not know that. And I'm sure many of our viewers, some of them probably do. We, I got to tell you, we have the smartest group of people, I think, in yeah. all of Facebook when it comes to, we really do. Whenever I have a question, I can throw it out and somebody's there'd be two or three people that come up with the answer. If not that's Linda, great. our moderator, Linda's out there. That. She's working the, yeah, Linda's out there working the, uh, all the chat right now. She does so much. She's a wonderful, uh, Linda Simpson. Um, and, uh, so, okay. So that was, that's interesting. And, and I know, you know, hopefully there's more going to be said about the swamp and the eye of the swamp. We know that there's a lot of work going down on the Southeast side. Um, but let's jump over to now lot 15 and, and what's going on there. Now I'm assuming that at, at one point, you know, somebody must've, well, we saw the map. We saw the map that I think was a map that was a collaboration map between uh, Dan and Fred Nolan. And they had marked, there was a little mark on there that showed a rock feature on the map. And it said, uh, tunnel entrance with a question mark. Okay. But nobody ever went and did anything with it. So we were wondering, what the heck? Crazy, I mean, eh? you, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Why haven't you gone? I know they were spending all their time in 10X. And, and, and then, of course, they had their feud. And neither one of them were talking to each other. But they never went back and explored this. So I'm assuming that what you guys found when you first went there was just a, a rock, some rocks on top of the ground that looked rather odd. Is that the way it was? Yeah. So again, we go back to I was asked and and David, uh, you know, David McGinnis was mm -hmm. the lead on that mm -hmm. uh, particular part. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but again, we were called in to say, is this natural? Well, we both looked at it and right away said, no, this is not natural. Yeah. So what is it? And there we go from there. And, um, you know, the formation that, again, there's, you know, we talk about it being a, uh, a pine tar kiln mm -hmm. and uh, no one in Nova Scotia has ever excavated a pine tar kiln. Yeah. So there's not, there's not a book that you can go to and yeah. say, oh, on page 37 here, we have a pine tar kiln. And this tells us what to look for. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, it was, it was painstaking. Okay. Um, getting eaten by mosquitoes. We spent a lot of time, you know, centimeter by centimeter going down and going down. And um, slowly, slowly it, it started to tell us, you know, what it probably was. Um, it can only be so many things. It wasn't a well, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't an ice house. Um, but pine tar was a really important thing for ships, for ships mm -hmm. riggings. Uh, they needed it. And during the, you know, 16, 1700s, Scandinavia had the monopoly on it. Some of it was gotten down in, in the New England states, but that's a long way to go. And if you needed it, you'd have to pull over and make it yourself the best you right. could. We didn't have right. the good quality pine. But, um, you know, and then we were finding nails. Nails are really important. Uh, I think in one of the shows you saw me passing Laird over a bag of nails. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm sure your viewers know all about nails, you know, hand wrought nails. Mm -hmm. They're sort of square. Right. Um, they're hard to date as well, but you know, they come in early and they go up to the 1790 and then the style changes into 1840. And mm -hmm. then they come in the cut nails, which they can more mass produce. Right. So, right. In the pine tar kiln, we were getting cut nails up above, mm -hmm. and then below we were getting the earlier wrought nails. Mm -hmm. so they, had been going for, like, they had been going for quite a while, though. They, they had been working for quite a while. Or that it had been used by two different groups who recognized oh. what it was. Oh, um, interesting. Possibly. Yeah, I hadn't thought um, of that. And yeah, there was the burning that David has talked about um, and where the charcoal was found and where it wasn't. Um, but again, 
I don't think David, David, he, he, you know, he, again, he was the lead on this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think definitively we will say it is a pine tar kiln, but all the evidence points towards it being a pine tar kiln. Right, right. And I know that at one point there too, you guys got down once the, uh, and I've got a, a couple of pictures that I can try to, I'm uh, kind of, I'm still learning with the, uh, I'm using BeLive and I'm still kind of learning on this a little bit, but um, we also come to find out too that um, uh, that he got down to, he called it glacial till. That's right. And and I, I have now when I, when you think of glacial till, I'm thinking, um, uh, you know, obviously that's something that's going to be deposited when the glacier comes through. And that pretty much means what? Go ahead and explain that to us if you don't mind. Well, that's just sterile. The glaciers came through um, that sort of this area probably 13,000, 14,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you get down to there, it's it's uh, much prior to human being there. So it's sterile soil. It hasn't seen the light of day by humans. Mm -hmm. So that's when we know to stop. Um, so that's where we got down to glacial till. You always excavate to sterile soil. Um, right. And once you hit that point, that means there's really, it's not a tunnel entrance, in other words, at that point, because it would be disturbed ground underneath that. There wouldn't be that glacial till, right? Is that? That's correct. That basically, That's okay. Correct. So, and it, it, that was a sad thing for many of us, because I know, and Rick and Marty, I know they were kind of hoping it was a tunnel entrance, like we were too. We're watching this thing and we're like, oh, it's got to be a tunnel entrance. Pine tar mm -hmm. kiln. Well, maybe wasn't it was about halfway to the bunny <laughs> pit and halfway to the swamp, wasn't it? Yeah, well, they, they did show on the one map about it being 500 feet down to the southeast corner of the swamp and 500 feet down to the money pit. And so it made like a triangle right there is kind of what they were saying. Is that oh, what with, you're referring to, Jack? With the yeah. drilled stone that I that I found? Oh, yes. Well, that yeah, that that one stone. Are you talking about? Matter of fact, I've got a picture of it, too. Uh, let me let me try this. Let me see if I can get this to work. I'm going to try to uh, bring this up here. Let's see. Well, he's bringing that up. I got a question for you, Aaron, from one of yeah. our uh, members. What do they do to preserve the site once you finish your work? Do they, how do they save, save it? Is what I guess is what they're saying. Uh, uh, that's a great question. Uh, that's something that archaeologists we we deal with constantly. Um, depending on what it is, most of the time we backfill it, so we we protect it by backfilling it. We put all the dirt that we collected, we document it, we draw it, we photograph it, we measure it. And once the, all that's been done, um, then we backfill it. If it's something really extraordinary, um, it's at great cost, but sometimes the province will step in and, um, you know, they'll keep it open and they'll make it so that it can be displayed for the public. Um, but that's very expensive. So... That's why we, we take so much time and effort documenting it. Um, but yeah, then we backfill it. Okay. I always wonder, because I know you get to, you found some pottery in there too, didn't you, if I remember correctly? It, no, there's no there's no pottery in the pine tar kiln. No, okay. just, that, that was the other thing. Um, just not many artifacts and you can imagine a pine tar kiln, how smoky and smelly and mm -hmm. be horrible to be around. So you're not going to be sitting around having tea and eating and breaking stuff. Um, it was just the nails. Oh, yeah, that's that's the stone. Um, yeah, I didn't know the significance of this. Um, but when I found it, everyone got really excited. And then, as you saw in the episode, Steve Guptill came came up and and, and did measurements on mm -hmm. it so so can you tell exciting. us a little bit more i mean did can you tell us anything about the stone was what's what was the what did it carry some significance um it just looks out of place um well yeah for sure yeah it's got the dimple in it plus you that beveled edge that you had yeah out on well i floor. first saw the beveled edge and, and i said this doesn't look um mm -hmm. you know this looks a little strange so then i you know i just went very carefully and Next thing you know, uh, that little drilled hole uh, mm -hmm. appeared. And right. um, you could tell it was pecked um, 
so it wasn't it wasn't machine drilled it was uh packed with a hammer and chisel um ah, interesting so, could have been used yeah. for a sorry what was that Jack? could you could it be like for a surveyor to put something a surveyor thing down in very, very possibly um mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's that's steve guptel's area but he was yep. very excited to come up and, and get measurements on that and right that's interesting yeah that was that was one very interesting thing that we uh we came across there and um let's see i want to see if i can actually uh pull up another one. Oh yeah just uh, there's a few other pictures there's when steve steve showed up at the island or at the uh lot 15 site there yeah to do some work uh working with you uh let's see oh yeah there's laird of course you're coming in there to sorry my dogs uh oh, it's okay uh, it's okay no yeah, problem. Stop in just a second. No problem. There. Now, did Sorry you have to quarantine before you went over or not? Or did you go straight over since you were from Canada? I, well, I'm from Nova Scotia, so um, I didn't have to quarantine, no. No. Oh, that's good. Yep. Yeah, oh, we, had an, Atlantic, we oh. had the, an Atlantic bubble, so all the maritime provinces. And almost the entire summer, um, we had zero cases. Um, so it, it was great. Uh, it was almost life as normal. Um, so yeah, we were really fortunate that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I know well, the Gaines Department from the States had that problem. I didn't yeah. know if every province had their little thing with it as you go through and everything. Well, uh, Nova Scotia, PEI, and New Brunswick and Newfoundland, um, we all were in this bubble. So if you just traveled within that area, you didn't have to quarantine. But if you came from outside, you had to do a two-week quarantine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you left the bubble and came back or you're coming from somewhere else, you had to do the quarantine. Right. So, so yeah, some of the um, – some one of the uh, users here, and I don't have some of the names that are not showing up for me, but it says uh, – somebody asked, uh, did you look um, – on the back and under, I'm, I'm assuming that rock, is that rock still sitting in the same place or have you removed it from there? And have you examined the entire thing, rolled it over and looked at all sides? Yeah, I believe, um, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it was taken to the war room okay. where they looked at it. Um, but no, every inch of that stone was, was examined. Mm, yep. Yeah. yeah, I kind of figured it would be. Yeah, now I just brought up a picture here. This is showing uh, Rick and Marty down in the hole there because they really wanted to get involved in it. Um, yeah. They wanted to move some rocks around a little bit. Uh, and then there was also the talk about, you know, it was kind of funny because they were, you know, talking about removing some of the rocks. And, um, and you know, and Rick, you know, they were talking about, well, we're going to need to get something. And, and Rick's standing there going, I don't see anything there. We can't move. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. Like yeah there are stones and there are boulders this yeah. is a stone and you know it's a, it's huge and he he's strong as a bear just picks it right yep. up and flunks it off so <laughs> yeah oh my gosh it would be i that's got to be so much fun i would love working with those guys i really would i think uh, that would be hilarious and then of course there's a shot wonderful yep <laughs> yep yeah Yep. So, uh, so is, uh, you know, our, so I, I'm assuming that at this point that the lot 15 <clears throat> has been relatively concluded. Um, and you, as you said, you don't know if you haven't made a definitive, I guess, to where they're not, it was a pine tar kiln. Um, but obviously most of the evidence leads to that. Now, one of the things I did want to ask was about, uh, uh, David uh, McGinnis had mentioned, uh, that he found some carbon and he said, you're going to have to get that dated. Is that something you talk about? Has that been dated? Is that, do we know? Yeah. So the charcoal, you can date charcoal. Um, mm -hmm. he, he has done a report and, um, I haven't read the report yet, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay. Hopefully yeah. we'll hear about that in upcoming, uh, episodes here. We'll get to find out, uh, uh, exactly what the, you know, that was, if that was tested, because that's something I'd like to know. And like you said, it's a very good possibility because of the different types of nails you were finding that it might've been used by yeah. two different groups of people. Now we know that, <clears throat> yeah, we know that uh, Jack Begley and uh, Gary Drayton were doing a lot of, um, you know, the metal detecting and they found the ox 
shoes, oxen shoes. And they took those over to Carmen Lake and Carmen, you know, you know, made the determination. Yes, indeed, they were ox shoes. Well, Gary mentioned that too. And then they talked about the fact that it looked like there was a path. Um, and this would be a, like a cart or path where they would, you know, and again, if it was a pine tar kiln, very good likelihood that they were taking pine tar between the, um, the lot 15 site there and the southeast corner of the swamp, which we are now learning has a lot more significance and very well could have been a place where they were using it to repair ships and seal ships, right? Is that kind of the gist of all that? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. 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 No problem. <laughs> we, will go, we, will go, we will go there. With so that. they found the ox shoes, um, possibly a trail. Um, okay. This is there's so much work to do. Um, okay. Yeah, that's all I can say. Okay, no problem. I, I wasn't sure if I would, and, and again, I'm sorry for tepid, but I don't know sometimes when I'm going to step into an area that can't no, be talked about. And again, <laughs> and again, I'm in Canada, so I haven't seen last night's episode. I don't know oh, what okay. you guys have seen. So right. Um, right. so I don't know what really I can talk about and I can't in that, in that right. sense. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Do you have any students up there with you this year? I, don't, I think Liz is an archaeologist, isn't she, if I remember correctly? Liz Michaels, yes, yeah, yes, she just graduated. Did you, yep. Did you, uh, did you have any of your students come up to her to work this year just for the experience? Uh, no comment. Okay, <laughs> can't do that. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No problem. But um, yeah, that's really uh, and some of the we're still getting some other uh, somebody. One of the users asked, uh, "Could there still be you know again? Could there still be a tunnel under it?" I, I suppose there could, right? I mean, we don't know. Um, not based on the evidence that we have. Mm -hmm. I, I would never say 100% no. Right. There's no evidence to indicate that there is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the thing, too, is because if, it, if there was a tunnel that went through there and it was 50 feet down, well, you're not going to determine that from what you did. And you wouldn't know if there's a tunnel going underneath there because you're not digging down that deep. So it's possible it's not a tunnel entrance. I think that's been determined, but whether or not there's a tunnel going under it, nobody knows yet at this point. I suppose that's a uh, that's the thing there. Um, that's something a, else. That's a fair statement. That's okay. a fair fair statement. There was a another group of rocks. I noticed that um, uh, that Jack and uh, Gary when Gary had the. Uh, well, what did he call it? The something 6,000 uh, metal detector with the, the pipe on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he was going around that he called Jack the Jack 6,000. But he was and he yeah. was going around and he was very near because they were in lot 15. They were ne very near where you guys were working. And they found another pile of boulders and rocks around this area. And, and Gary even made a comment about that. He goes, well, this is another big pile of rocks. Is that has that been looked at or is that something you can can or can't talk about i don't know i just we didn't hear any more about it but yeah, yeah. i really can't comment on that no problem yeah no problem um, at all but there's i can comment there's there's stuff all over the island that just is a head scratcher mm -hmm. so from what from what we've been able to ascertain the side of the island that you are on now is bringing up a lot more things than people originally thought was over in that in that area i mean everybody else was down by the money pit down by smith's cove and now the further back you go the more you're finding the more things that were happening mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean all I, I all i can say is it was an incredible incredible experience and um you know i often wonder if you know the old the old um magician you know, look over here, look over here, and the real action is going somewhere else. So <laughs> you never know. Um, but it, yeah, it was an amazing season for me personally. And uh, it, it was a really, really fascinating uh, mm -hmm. time for me. Uh, one one question that Sharon asked here, she said, uh, do you ever have to reopen sites that you have covered back up? Uh, oh yes, yes. Um, sometimes weather will um, cause us to end the season. Um, you know, we get we get 
winter here quite early. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not finished a unit or a site, you put uh, gardening mesh down, then you backfill it, and then oh, wow. you get to have the wonderful experiences of redigging it back up with shovels until you get down to that layer again. Right. So, yeah, it's so you try to finish before the season ends. Right. Yeah, for sure. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's what Pam uh, Pam Block said. Uh, over time, nature uh, like uh, uh, looks like it covers it up too. So that's uh, very true. Yep. Yeah, yeah, nature will definitely do that. So that that's interesting. Um, it's okay. So we've talked about lot 15 and I think we're pretty much, you know, um, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot more going on with lot 15 that we can, uh, gather at least, at least for now. Um, so that's very interesting. And then, um, so I wanted to, uh, uh, now is there, I, I don't know if we touched on this too much. Is there other digs that you're involved in other things that are going on in your, in Canada that you're working on or have been working on recently? Uh, I was just up on a project up in um, sort of the northwest of Nova Scotia uh, on an Acadian site, um, a dike. They're fixing the dikes, moving the dikes, and building them up. So I had to go in and do some shovel testing and monitoring a site. Okay. Um, but most most of the time in the wintertime, you're report writing. So I've got several uh, okay. reports I'm working on. Um, and then in January, I'll be back to teaching at the university. So, um, I got a full plate. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and then hopefully, uh, come springtime, you'll be back on the Island. Well, we certainly hope that you are. That's for sure. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. We'd, we'd definitely be looking forward to that. And as the season goes along, we'd certainly love to have you come back and talk about other things that have uh, transpired on the island, and once it's been aired, obviously, then you can talk about it. So we, we definitely hope that you would want to come back and join us again. Um, it would be my pleasure. I'd yeah, love that'd, to. That'd be great. It's been um, very interesting. We've learned an awful lot just from what you've given us tonight. Oh yeah. Oh great, great. I'm glad I could help. So yeah. we've been we've been talking for about an hour here, and what I'd like to do uh, for our members is jump in a little bit to um, and talk some about the the actual shows um let's see uh let's see let's have inspired on the island oh um don uh wagner is asking a question here that uh linda thank you linda's helping me with because i i can only see certain uh um parts of the text that are going by the chat from chat um says don wagner is asking that um that have transpired on the island wants to know if there isn't another viking site reported in the south side of newfoundland oh i guess he's talking about um, another site that might have been found what do you, do you know about that i i know what he's talking about a woman um uh, a professor i forget where she's from believes that she's located a site uh using uh satellite imagery oh, wow. but that but it hasn't been confirmed yet hmm. so there's right. no confirmation on that yet right wow so um okay so hopefully we'll hear about more of that and that's the kind of thing too is that we i i, I love hearing about that personally i really do that's that's oh, really yeah, me uh, too. yeah that that kind of stuff just fascinates me to no end okay so jump in a little bit to uh and, it, and we'd love to have you stick around if you want to stick around with us i know there might be some things we talk about that you haven't <laughs> you haven't seen yet we need to get you hooked up with the vpn i have a i have a link on our group page uh, that talks about getting a VPN and then getting another program. There's other ones out there. There's one called uh, uh, Phil Philo, I, yeah, P H I L O. I think it's called Philo. Um, you can get a VPN and then tell the VPN that you're actually watching from the U.S. and then you get Philo and then you can watch Oak Island on Tuesday night with everybody else. Um, and awesome. some of our Canadian uh, and overseas uh, members have already done that uh, and they're doing that now so they can watch it when we watch it because we hate to do spoilers. But for our friends in, in Canada that um, haven't uh, haven't seen uh, and it won't see last night's episode until Sunday night. We give them, it's a big spoiler, I know, because we're getting ready to talk about all that. And it kind of blows it for them a little bit, but they still, they still get excited about watching the show. But, you know, yeah. we, uh, we just can't wait. I mean, it's like, we want to talk about last night's episode. So if you'd love to hang yeah. around, I'd love for you to stick around with us. And as we jump into uh, it. I I'd love to, but my wife is uh, looking at me impatiently for her laptop uh, oh. <laughs> to return to her. So. 
So, uh, we must be, well, we thank you for being on. Yes. We oh, really my pleasure. It. My pleasure. Yeah. This has been great. And I Not hope you had all. a good experience here with us tonight. And again, like I said, we'd love to have you come back. Uh, and, well, and I'd be happy, to, more than happy to. Great. That's awesome. Thank, Mary. You. thank you so much. Good night, right. everyone. <laughs> good night. All right. Well, that was Aaron, uh, Dr. Aaron Taylor. Uh, I know that when uh, we did a little bit of research with him, um, we did not have him uh, as a doctor. As a doctor, yeah, exactly. Um, he was showing up as uh, uh, a candidate and working on getting it, but that's official. So he is officially a doctor. Uh, he has his PhD and it's official and, uh, that's fantastic. And congratulations on that, Aaron. That's fantastic that you got that. And, uh, and we just love seeing you on the Island. So that's really good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, everybody's thanking him for being on and that was great. So let's jump into the, uh, the show a little bit more. And, uh, so here we are. What I wanted to do briefly is talk a little bit about, um, last week's episode <clears throat> because I kind of ran through it. Of course, last week, uh, um, you know, we had um, uh, Christian Roper on with us and I didn't get a chance to really sit down and really talk about Oak Island as much as I wanted to. Um, and so I kind of breezed through some of it and we didn't uh, catch half the, the ending of the show. Uh, but one thing I wanted to start off in, in revisiting, um, if y'all don't mind, is to talk a little bit about uh, Aaron Helton Helton and uh, what she brought to the show. Then I've got some more pictures that uh, hopefully I can get going here. Let's see. All right. And um, so we'll go ahead and I'll try to bring some of these up. Now, she was very, uh, I, I was just very fascinated by her uh, simply because she was, she was so confident and she just laid out her stuff and without any hesitation obviously a very good speaker and it was great i really really uh, enjoyed that um, and i'm sure that everybody else did as well um, i do have some pictures here that i want to bring up um, and let's see let's see i'm reading some of the the text messages coming over here let's see bear with me just a moment uh, let's see I'm having a problem with that tonight for some reason. Let's see. I can still hear you. All right. Uh, I'm, I, I'm trying to get the messages, but my oh. tablet doesn't want to cooperate with me tonight. Uh, okay. Uh, I do need to remember to tell people that they... Oh yeah, exactly. Um, yep. Yeah. I forgot to, um, yeah, I forgot to tell Aaron that he can come back out. We'll, we'll text him and tell him that he can come back on and, and answer some of your questions that you guys have put up in the chat. He can come back and answer them after the fact. And, uh, we encourage that he does that. So uh, appreciate that, Linda. Thank you very much for reminding me about that. Um, and also I wanted to make mention, uh, and I know Jack, you wanted to talk about our synopsis, uh, that we have given for us. Um, First, I think we just have to thank Jane Anderson for doing a wonderful job at a synopsis. It is really yes. helpful. Yes, it is. I got and I actually and I and I and I tell you what, I actually went and I and I printed it out because I wanted to have it here tonight. And you know, and I printed out her synopsis. This is only the first page, uh, but she gave such a wonderful uh, uh, recap of the entire show last night. So thank you so much, Jan, for all that hard work, and we do appreciate that very, very much. Um, because that's just, uh, it's a lot of work. And, you know, and that's that's the thing is because, and I do the same thing when the show is on, I'm, I'm paying attention to the show, but I'm also taking notes. And, and, and in a way, in a small way, it kind of takes away from the experience of the show because I just want to watch the show and go, oh, look at that. Oh, you know, and here I am, I'm, I'm busy taking notes and writing things down, but but it's all good because uh, uh, fortunately I have the app, uh, the History Channel app, and I can go watch it again later, which is what I did uh um, after the fact, I went and watched it on the app. So that's all uh, that was exciting to uh, to be able to sit down and just relax and watch the show and enjoy it for what it is. Okay, so um, what I wanted to do with um, 
Let's see. Let me bring this up here. All right. Yeah. Look at this. I'm actually making this stuff work. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? I, I'm really surprising myself and being able to make these pictures work. Um, we started off uh, with, I wanted to go back and, and start off with talking about Erin uh, Helton and her presentation. And she started it off with talking about Zena uh, Helpern's map um, that was from the 1347. 47. Yeah, thank you. Um, and talking about the two anchor points. And those two anchor points being right here, I don't know if you can see my mouse. See, I guess I can. Uh, the, the two anchor points right here shown in red. Okay. Um, and then uh, after she brought this up, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just reading some of the chat. Thank you, Linda. Hooray. Yeah, I, got, I know I got it working. I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> Work in progress. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Thank you, Jack. And having Jack on, you guys can hear Jack. I know that's been going on since the beginning, but, uh, you know, then we, yeah, have we got it fixed from last week anyhow. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so then uh, she got on uh, talking about uh, Nolan's Cross, of course, and then the uh, rock, uh, one of the boulders that's out on uh, that's Isaac's, Isaac's point out that way in the just outside of the uh, Smith's Cove that. That's what that's called is Isaac's point. Isn't that Jack? Isn't that what yeah. that is? Okay. So rock number 20A, and then she brought up rock number 21A that's over by the causeway. Okay. Uh, a boulder over there. And you see her little sign there. And then she went in and talked about the line that goes between the two. And the fact that that line uh, is uh, just a fraction of a degree off from true east and west. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, let's see, somebody brought up here. I can't see the name, unfortunately. But he said the stones just look like they weren't large enough as anchors. Yeah, I know. And I was going to get to that. I got some pictures I want to show about that too. Uh, I do agree with you. I was expecting a big boulder or something, and they got these little rocks. And uh, we'll we'll delve into that here in just a minute. Um, uh, so, so anyway, so they got this, uh, the line, it's all, it's almost exactly due east and west, which I thought was pretty miraculous, uh, in itself right there, uh, that she found those. And also up here on the top, 6A. Now I didn't know the significance of 6A and I'm still torn a little bit on the significance of 6A. Um, so, you know, and again, it, they use that as a center point for a circle or she did, um. So, and here you see that circle right here, part of that circle coming through on this line here. Um, and then also you come down through the headstone. Uh, they're calling it the headstone. It's the one in the center here, uh, which looks like it may have a head uh, carved into it or was at one time. And uh, the other stone that's out here on the uh, uh, Tom, now Tom Nolan's property. And then she's pointing down to a boulder here at 15A. Um, and she had a nice description of how you put these all together uh, with these lines and how they, they had helped them to find 15A. So you take the big circle and then you take that line down and it points to a boulder that should be 15A. Now she was saying that this 15A is in fact the Southern anchor point. Now, when we say anchor, we're not talking about a place where a ship's going to come up and tie off to it. It's an anchor having to be a marker of some sort. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, yes. Uh, and that may be what he just said there. Unfortunately, I can't see the chat, the names on the chat. Um, but it says, I think their anchor points are for measuring markers. Yes, I agree. Now, didn't Gary say on the first uh, anchor that they went to, Gary said you could probably see that first one from the bay as you were coming mm -hmm. up. Right. Yes. And now yeah, the second that, one, they were really it was back kind of back in the bushes, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, that's this one here, the North Anchor, um, that they were talking about that they said uh yeah, that one is they found it right there on the shoreline. Um and it's back almost to the well, it was right up to the tree line, right up to the bank uh of the shore. Now Something I'm gonna was gonna talk about a little bit too um, was the fact that you know we 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 know that the the oceans have been rising, and so the beach has moved. Um, when I well not moved, but it has it has changed. The edge of the island has changed simply because of the ocean rising. Um, but they found that there, 
And uh, then she would take, and she was talking about these drilled, East drilled rock and 16A. And there's also 18A, which is a drilled rock, I guess, in the money pit area. And then 16A also. Um, and then she was able to use, um, uh, she is a GIS analyst, uh, geographical, oh, I forgot what that was now. Oh, I forgot boy. That. Yeah, I know. Huh? I had you got right me on that one, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I had it written down, too. Geographical, uh, is, uh, geographical information systems. Okay. <laughs> And so she was able to use these particular points of interest and be able to say exactly, bam, by using these and using a circle uh, that was being uh, made by one of the stones there that she was able to actually pinpoint where the money pit is. Now, thank you, Linda. Yeah, it was Geographical Systems Information Systems, or GIS. And, uh, and this turns out... I didn't have a picture of the actual where they thought, and I and I and again, I'm going to have to ask for some help on this. But there was a a particular center point that they think that they is right over top of the money pit or the chapel vault, and it had a name to its uh, to the actual um, small, I think four or six inch case on that they put down. I forget the number of that particular one, uh, but it was like only off by like three feet. Uh, which they that said was, that was a big that was a big case that was a big one they wrote up a lot of wood on that one they were just uh, okay it. okay uh, I think that's what I think Vanessa was on that one I think that was a big eight foot one that they did and they brought up all that wood and everything else and were just short RF one yes thank you RF one uh, <laughs> markers used on the golf course hole one hole two so yeah yeah. Um, yeah, the lower the, the water in the higher land, too. Yeah, RF1, thank you. And it was only off by just a few feet from RF1, uh, like within three feet. So that's pretty miraculous. Now, how she was able to do that, hopefully at some point, we'd love to have Aaron, you know, be able to help us uh, help explain that a little bit uh, more. Because, yeah, rest all family one, thank you. Um, because we know for a fact that, and, and some of the theorists have talked to us about this before, that they're, they, they're, they'll be on conference in the war room for an hour or two or meeting or whatever, if they're on video or not. And then we only see about 10 minutes worth of it. Now, we've seen Aaron on two episodes now, uh, and she was able to talk about this on the first episode last week. And then I'm going to jump into what she was talking about on the new episode uh, from last night next. Um, and we'd love to have her because I know there was more to her explanation of all this than what she was able to say on the show. And I'd love to have that, uh, get that explanation because I need to understand this a little bit more. Um, I, yeah, I can see the, the, the rocks and how the circles and the lines were all marked out and how she got, you know, how that's pointing to this point, but how did she arrive at these, uh, uh, you know, to think, okay, we're six, we take six A, we use it as a center point for a circle. How did you arrive at that? That's we. I didn't really get that information, and that's something that uh, um, I think we kind of missed out on a little bit. I, at least I did. Um, now is now we're getting on to the rocks and on to um, the search for these rocks. Um, they did go out and they found what they think was the one fifteen A, um, and they went out and they looked at it, and it was right on the. Uh, she gave some coordinates to Steve Guptill, and Steve went out with his uh, GPS marker, and he yeah. found this rock and uh, got right on top of the rock and said, yes, this is the coordinates that she's given. And I don't believe she's been on the island to know that there was a rock right there, but sure enough, here's this rock or a boulder. Um, Jeff, was it happened one where he put the stick down? There was a little mark in that rock that you put. Yeah, yes, yeah, and I'm going to show that next. Um, there is, right there, has a little dimple in it where he put the marker right in that little dimple uh, on the rock. Now, was that dimple made for somebody? I don't know. Uh, but it's one of the things that I, I thought was interesting was that, for one, I was expecting a boulder, a big boulder, something like Nolan's Cross-type big boulder. Uh, when in fact we got this much smaller 
boulder. Um, and in my mind, I'm I, I, again, I'm looking for a big boulder, but also I'm looking for something on this to be definitive, to say some kind of a marking. So they were looking for that too. They dug around it and there's, you know, you know, it's kind of funny because all these people are standing around and they say, Jack, get busy. And Jack, <laughs> Jack gets in there with this short handled shovel and he starts digging. Trying to turn the rock over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you see, uh, what was it? Alex and uh, Marty, you know, they get some longer handled shovels, shovels to go in there and start helping a little bit. Um, uh, oh, she got them off a of LIDAR, uh, LIDAR map. Thank you. Um, yeah, the coordinates lined up. Yeah, that's very true. Um, she she saw the stone. Maybe she saw the stones from there. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, they get down there and they dig around this rock. And then, uh, you know, they roll it over and they're looking on the back side. And that was this previous picture that I had looking at the back side of it. Um, now, you know, uh, I was... Uh, um, and this, I credit this over to, uh, uh, could it be podcast? Um, uh, um, they were talking about this, uh, this particular rock and there was a, a possibly a feature on here of a, of a mark that's being covered up by his hand. Now, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, and, and thank you very much for that. I was very interested when I saw that Deidre, um, white was talking about this, uh, that his hand, when he took his hand away, there looked like there was a mark underneath it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if there was or not. Um, and uh, it's hard to say. But um, so I think they would have pointed it out if they would have saw something or unless Marty's trying to hide something, which I don't know if he would do that. I don't think he would do that. But uh, anyway, so, you know, but me, I'm looking for something to say. They said, oh, Gary was saying, or like you just said, Jack, Gary was saying, hey, when the ship is pulling up, they could see this rock from the beach. I don't know that they could. I, I I'm kind of I'm kind of torn on that because the rock was may not have the, been submerged. The first, one, the first one that's a maybe. Now the second one, there would be no way because that was covered by trees and everything else, if I remember correct. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Um, that's the one Alice went back to because they were looking for a mark on that one also. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Could could uh, somebody was saying could be uh, they only needed to find one anchor, much larger and more obvious uh, in size to lead them to the smaller ones. Could be. You could be right. Uh, sorry, I don't have a name on that, so I don't know exactly uh, who said that. But you could be, you could be right. Uh, and somebody else said the rock is way too small. And I and I kind of agree with that. I mean, I'm expecting a bigger rock. And after they rolled this thing over, they don't find any definitive marks on it besides that little dimple. And I don't call that definitive. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little torn on whether or not. I do believe in the, the anchors. I do believe that because it was on that map. Um, but if it's a marker, it could work. Yeah, Linda says it's too small for a ship anchor, right? Yeah, it's not going to be a ship anchor. But it could be a small rock could be used as a marker anchor of some sort. And we did, and that's a, that was a translation too, wasn't that, Jack? Right. Wasn't that a translation saying it was an anchor? Uh, and they might have that translation off just a little bit. Well, I know when they went to the second marker, Alex went. They, Alex kind of wiggled, wiggled his way down back into that, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And he had questions that he couldn't say one way or the other, but he he said there was something there. He just couldn't tell what it was. Right. If I remember that's correctly. True. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah. And so, oh, here I do have a picture of where his hand was and it's right in this area here. And I'm, I don't know, my pictures are not as clear. Um, so, but I don't, uh, and again, thank you Deidre for pointing that out. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't see that there, I don't know, there is a marking right here, but again, I'm not sure, um, what that is. And, and I got to tell you, Deidre too, you had me laughing. I was laughing so hard. You guys will have to watch, uh, watch it. Uh, uh, could it be uh, Oak Island? And because I was rolling, she was talking about. Well, I'll let you watch it. I'll, I'll just say the word arc. I'll just say the word arc. And I was I was rolling when I watched. That. It was so funny, uh, and so were they. But it was pretty pretty hilarious. Anyway, so there was a big long like a crevice in this one rock as well when they rolled it over. But again, that's not definitive. I mean, I'm looking for something that says, "Hey, I'm the rock you're looking for." I've got the cross that or something or something like that. Exactly. And I didn't see it on there, so I don't know. 
so I was a little, I, I was left a little ho hum on it. Let's say on that one. Now we get over to the second rock, six A, the northern anchor. And again, I'm I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit torn on this thing because when they show the anchor in the first picture of Zena's map. Now it doesn't show that north anchor being on the beach. It shows the mark is shown inland. Now, granted, if it's 1347 and Rick had made a comment about the fact that the sea level would uh, raise about a foot every century. Okay. So 1347, now we're here. We are in the, in 2000 and 20 and you know seven centuries later um not quite seven centuries later the the water would have risen what about seven feet okay give or take um so that rock would have been further inland if the water level was lower right am i am i looking at that the right way jack yeah if the water I, I hear you yeah, so if the if the water level was seven feet further Bad. away from where it is now, then that may you have could not see that. You could not see that. I don't think that right. I don't think all. you could have seen that rock. Not only that, but also it would have been up on the beach further, maybe in the trees a little bit, like it was shown on Zena's map. I don't know. Again, I'm a little torn on the whole thing. Um, and again, I'd love to have a better explanation on this. Uh, um, but it, it, in this one here, you see that marker that, that mark that's on it. I kind of, as, when I first saw that, you know, uh, I think it was Alex had said something about it, it kind of resembled the boat stone. Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's dude. so, um, but when I first looked at it, I thought, well, this is almost like a shoe print. You got the heel over here and then you got the pointy toe part over here with the arch right here in the center where it's not making, I don't know. But again, they didn't roll it over. All they did was go in and look at it. They looked at this. They and Stephen or Steve put his uh, his GPS marker on it and said, "Yep, this is it. This is the point." They didn't roll it over. They they dug up the other one and rolled it over to look and see if there was a mark on it. They didn't roll this one over. They just said, oh, yeah, look at that mark on it, and then they left it. What do you guys think about that? I'm like, wait a minute, roll this thing over. Let's see what. <laughs> I think Murray said it was a good day, and they just turned around and yeah. walked back. Yeah. Oh, it's a good day. Let's go. Oh, man. Alan Edmund. Wouldn't, I she bet she, if we didn't have COVID, I bet she would love to get in that building where all of Zena's stuff is. Yeah. Because Rick has all that on the island right now. He, he acquired all that when she died. Um. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, he did. He was given access to all of her files. Actually, he they they gave them to her. her they gave them to him. And they yeah. brought him up, and they and they brought that one building in because of the fact that they brought Zena's stuff, you know, back over. Right. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, but I mean, again, you know, if I were him, and I don't know if he had those back in Michigan with him, or if he left them on the island, or I think he's got a place. Obviously, I think they both have places on the on excuse me, on the mainland, the houses they were staying in before they were allowed to, allowed to go over to the island. Um, I think those, I don't know, they, I, they've never said, uh, do they own those two houses, Rick and Marty, uh, own those two houses that they were waiting in where they had to quarantine for two weeks before they could go over to the island. Um, is that where the, all this all this stuff is that Zena has? I mean, and you, I would almost want to hire a team to sit down and start going through all this stuff because just like all the file cabinets that... Uh, uh, Dan Blankenship had that you know, Doug was I, able to go through over the winter months. I mean, or, or I you know. may be wrong, but I thought when they brought Zena stuff over, it went to the island because to the learning center, and then they brought that other building over later on, mm -hmm. also. Right, right. Well, I could be off on that, but I, you know, I, but it was like a full truck of stuff that came over. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, I would get a team to start going through that because you can imagine how much good stuff is there to uh, to find. Um, uh, somebody's asking here said, uh, "Just a thought, maybe a lot of small rocks together make a marker, just busted apart." Whether uh, yeah, very true. Whether oh, by man, 
that you that's a good point that could be true um yeah very good very good see that's what i love about you guys man you guys got such good stuff to talk about and Linda, uh, Linda just said we were told they were rented homes and had seen the stuff is at the resource center ah uh, okay all right yep yeah see now there you go again those are the things that i didn't know that you guys know and I, that's why i love i that's why i love doing this because you know we can all sit here and collaborate and and share ideas and, and knowledge on this um, this is what I enjoy. This is already my second time. I just enjoy, I, and this is what I enjoy. The I conversation know. back and forth. I, I do too, and I and I unfortunately because I work all week long, I don't get a chance to uh, to to per peruse the um, all the chat that goes by all the during the day when I'm at work. I get little notifications, you know, pop up on my phone and stuff. But I'm working. I can't go back and sit and read all this stuff. I really wish I could. Yeah, it's uh, me and Linda bugging you probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's a research. Doug's been going through it. Somebody said Doug's been going through it. Yeah, so good. That's great because there's so much. And Fred Nolan, Fred Nolan's research. And I know that Tom has given them access, but I don't know that he's turned over all that stuff. Uh, anyway, I, I think Fred took a lot with him. I don't think we'll ever know. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. This This rock here, I wanted to point this out because this boulder, I should say. When they were on, when they were looking at the north one, six A, and they were looking not six A. I'm sorry, the uh, I forgot the number for it now, but the north anchor. When they were looking at it, they said something about, "Oh yeah, a ship, you know, could coming in here." Da da da. And they turned around and they showed this shot right here, and I'm like, "That's the kind of boulder I was thinking." Has yeah, anybody so, gone out? Has anybody gone out there and looked at that? I mean, I'd be, that, I'd be it's all just over noticeable. There. I mean, it just sticks out. Exactly. If you were going by in a ship and you saw that big rock out there, that big boulder out there, I would think that's more likely to be the anchor. I don't know. Again, I, I, I'm not on the island. I'm not out there. And I'm just watching these pictures from the show and everything. Um, I, I would just think that uh, maybe that's it. Hi, Deidre. Glad you're here. I was just talking about you. Hello, Deidre. I hope you don't mind. I was, I was bringing up and talking about the fact that you had mentioned the... Uh, uh, that when Marty had his hand on that one rock uh, and then when he took it off of the southern anchor and there was maybe a mark there I was just bringing it up I and uh, but I, I, I uh, I'm so glad you brought that up I don't know I, I hard to tell if it was if there's a, a cross or something there it's hard to see I wish I could see it for myself Urgh, I'd love to be on the island looking at that for myself with my own eyes now, I don't think they gave it enough attention. And also the other rock, we were just talking about the fact they never rolled it over. They didn't move it. They didn't look under it. They didn't look, they just looked on the top and, oh, that's a, oh let's call it a day. Come on, let's go. So anyway, I, I thought that was kind of kind of weird. But um, anyway, so this, this rock here, I thought would be more likely to be something of more significance. But again, they didn't, they didn't talk about it. They just, there it is sitting there. Um, and it's right there off the North Shore. Uh, where the uh, northern supposedly northern anchor is again i don't know we'll uh, we'll have to take that as we can now he had mentioned uh alex did he had mentioned something about the fact that yeah <laughs> i do too did i need i need something on that rock i need more on that rock for sure um they he had mentioned that he thought that that marking that was on the supposed north anchor uh, kind of looked like the boat stone uh and here's the boat stone uh that's uh what state is it in uh, do you remember oh. what state? do you remember what state it's in jack i know no, i know I, I remember i forgot what state it's in it's been quite a while since they had that on too i know i know uh but they did they talked about the boat stone and like four or five years ago they had that on from, what, from what i understand yeah yeah they did um but yeah, so here's the boat stone, and then um, that was supposed to be the beginning of to go find a treasure on Oak Island. I think that is, yeah, is that, yeah. I think how it was said, yeah. there, right? Yep. Now the boat stone. Now did the, did that resemble Massachusetts? Thank you, Deidre. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it was along the east coast, Massachusetts. Thank you. Um, but that that he said this this marking on this rock, which is supposedly the North Anchor, it kind of looked like. Uh, that marking of of the uh, boat stone, which eh, I don't know, I'm not really seeing it, but but then again, I'm not it, seeing it either. But you got to remember, there's a lot of harsh winters up there and everything else that could cause that to fade off. Also. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. 
Yeah, they they have very harsh winters. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. It could be it could be worn off to some degree. So I'm not really sure. But uh, anyway, I didn't think it. But I I do have one other thing that I want to. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Some another thought that occurred to me about this whole thing. Um, yes, there are numbers, and that's the next picture. One eighty four. Now again, everybody's been speculating. What does one eighty four stand for? What does it mean? And this arrow pointing. You know, well, we see it pointing down, but we don't know. I don't know the actual orientation of the rock, and it might have been pointing towards Nova Scotia. I, does anybody remember that? Uh, let's see. The boat stone, uh, Linda saying the boat stone found uh, in the 1950s by highway department. Right. Um, yeah, the numbers under the. So, yeah, the, the, one, the 184. So, but I don't know if we know the or actual orientation when they found it before it was touched and moved. Was it pointing towards Nova Scotia, the arrow, or what was happening there? We don't really, I, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys know um, about that. But but there was one thing that I, I did want to um, mention about that, and that is, that is this. Now, we know that the, um, you guys have heard about the, uh, the, the stone triangle that was, uh, they didn't talk about the arrow. Okay, looks like modern. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> no dark. Okay, that's what you had said on your show last night, DJ. And I was <laughs> rolling when you guys got off onto that Noah's Ark. There, that's All the right, boat. The that's the boat that's in the swamp. And oh, I was rolling. You guys, I was laughing so hard I couldn't. I couldn't contain myself. That was hilarious. You guys got to go watch that. That was so funny. Anyway. So something I wanted to show you was this. Now they have it. Obviously, these remember they were talked about the stone triangle that was down on the shoreline, just uh, south of the money pit area, and supposedly the line through the center of it pointed right towards the money pit. Okay, that's what was said. And I did have a picture of it, but it didn't come out very good. I tried to take a picture of what they showed on TV, and it just didn't come out very well. So there was an artist ren rendering of what it was supposedly looked like. Now we don't know how true this is, but you you look at the you look at the boat stone. Now I want you to, and I, I wish I could put these up side by side, but I'm not that sophisticated with this yet. So I'm going to show this one real quick. Okay, so there's the boat stone, right? Okay, and I'm going to click ahead a couple pictures here. Oops, I went past it. And there is the artist rendering of the stone triangle. Now, in my mind, that's more closely resembling the boat stone, if it's true. And again, we don't know how close this is to being what the true triangle looked like. And it got torn up. It was everything that was being torn up. Got obliterated. I think it was by uh, Dunfield. Obliterated the thing. What is bulldozer? Why would you do that? Ugh. Again, we need those archaeologists on the island back when he was there. But here's this thing. I'm thinking that looks an awful lot like. Do you see the line going up the center? The rounded bottom. If it is. And again, I say if it is. And I'm going to go back. You got the line right here going top to bottom. You got the point on top, the rounded bottom, and the pointy on the top. I don't know. You know, that almost looks like an old cross going up. It does. It does. You're right. Good point, Jack. That's, I wonder. Can you go back to the other one? See if we can see the same thing? The, the, uh, the, the point. The rendition. The, huh? The rendition of what you just showed here a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. I know. It is. I don't know. What do you guys think? I thought it looked pretty close. And again, like I said, I said it a couple times already. We don't know how close this is to what the real stone um, uh, arrow was look like exactly. But uh, now. To me, it looked like, to me, both pictures looked like Nolan's Cross a little bit. Yeah, you're right. They do. And I was saying, okay, if now let's just say, and again, I'm I'm stepping way out on a ledge here. Let's just say that this 
is supposed to be reminiscent uh, or the, the boat stone is supposed to be this. And they were putting, they said, here's the boat stone. Go look in this direction and you'll find something that looks like that's on the ground. And then they see this pointing toward the money pit and the numbers 184, 184 meters from, from here to the money pit. I don't know. I know I'm stepping out on a big ledge. I know I am. Uh, it seems like a sailboat. Right, it's it's a it's a I can't do that right now, right off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, okay, so from here, 184 meters, I don't know. They're not going to measure in feet back then. No. Uh, you know, so 184 something from here to the money pit. I don't know. It just occurred to me. I know it's a wild notion, one of those far out notions that we, uh, my brain comes up. But yeah, see, there it is, 184. I don't know. All right, so I'll move on. It's probably not, uh, you know, it's probably just one of those crazy things that I thought of that uh, has no uh, no basis in reality whatsoever. But anyway, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So, okay, so we have all that. We have these, uh, the anchors, supposedly the anchors, and a, a mark where the actual uh, money pit is. Um Let's see. Somebody's asking, "Do you think they uh, would see them from above?" I think they would have be visible from the water. One hundred eighty-four oxen. Days sailing to the right in the right direct to the direction that the arrow's pointing, or a Mason's triangle with the anchor. Huh. Right. Yeah, it's good stuff. I don't know. One hundred eighty-four oxen. What? What is that? Is that uh, was that a unit of measure at some point? I don't. Know. I don't know either. Yeah, somebody said 184 oxen. I'm not sure who said I that. I see it on my side over here. I, I yeah. don't have a name. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. Huh. Anyway, I know it's one of them crazy things that I thought of. But so, okay, so we got the anchors. Uh, we talked about the anchors a little bit. And then um, I wanted to move into what she was talking about. Uh, uh, the stone triangle looks like a sextant to me. You're right. It does. If, and again, uh, that's very, that's very, Good point. It does look like a sextant. Um, Eighty-four hundred. The, the sextant. When I looked up uh, the Mariah for you know when we had that on the show, the sextant uh -huh. was thirteen seventy-one when it was invented. Wow. It could be. It could be a sextant. It does look like a sextant. Yeah. You're right. Wow, that's a good point too. Thank you. Uh, yeah, very interesting stuff. All right, let's jump ahead a little bit. Um, uh, let's see, John Brent's oxen. Yeah, so we're not sure what that meant on the trail. Um, so um, I wanted to jump into last night's episode, and then here we have Erin uh, Helton's talking about, uh, and she had them take out. She she got a three D rendering of the of the uh, the uh, lead cross, and she made one uh, on a probably on a a three D printer. Uh, and got one, and then she was using that with a uh, a, a square, and they were drawing around it. They were putting some lines out, um, and she had Marty doing it. So here's Marty in the war room, and he's drawing it out too. And something that caught me by all of this is because um, you see that where she's positioning this on the on the square. It's not in the corner of the square. It's down about an inch and a half to two inches down. It's like in the middle of that line, that leg of the of the uh, square. Why there? And again, this is one of those things that probably has to do with the fact that, you know, she, you know, she was probably presenting this for an hour, and we get to see five minutes of it. So we didn't get that explanation of why is it down halfway down this this side of the thing, and then but to make out the lines and then come up with this sketch um, of those lines after it's created, which I thought was very interesting. 184 rods. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and again, when you do this, she was saying that the point down here at the bottom is basically right over top of where the stone marker was. This is one of those things where I would love to get a little bit more explanation uh, from Aaron on this because, you know, there's so much more I, I think I missed. I don't know about you guys, but when this was going on in the show, and I, I actually texted to, to Linda at the time and I said, 
I got to watch that again because I completely missed what they were talking about there. It kind of whoo, whoo, right on by. Um, it is that, you know, I, I need more explanation of how they come by, you know, marking this all out. We just didn't get enough. I don't know if you guys did. Does anybody else out there fully understand this whole thing? And then, of course, then the uh, LADAR image of the uh, island itself showing the north and the south anchor points here and here. Um, and then you overlay that, uh, that drawing that they made using the anchor, north anchor and the south anchor lines up exactly. But again, that has to do with the positioning of where they put the cross, the lead cross on that leg of the square. Something I, else I thought of hmm? when you talk about the lead cross, we were talking about this earlier. The lead cross was also used as a necklace and they put money on it. And came over, and maybe the money was maybe a sideshow to what it really to what it really meant. It could be, yeah, you could be right. Um, yeah, it was definitely, uh, you know, and I and I always and I kind of said before that the lead cross. I mean, boy, if they left that as a key at some point to be able to do this, whew, I mean, you're going out on a big limb right there to to have hope that somebody's going to find it uh, in the future. All those days later, I don't know. I mean, that's. Uh, uh, let's see. I was, I, was, I was just reading some of the chat here. One is lack of information about the measurements of the cross. I've never heard. I've never heard the measurements of the cross. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Sixteen to seventeen foot rod. Okay. Uh, lack of information about the measurements of the cross. Yeah, I know. Me too. I, I just didn't. Uh, how do you do that? Um, it, it just kind of. Flew right past me there and i come i really didn't catch this how they derived at this right here but something else that somebody else pointed out to me thank you very much linda uh for pointing this out um was that and i don't know that i've got uh, a picture of it here that emblem that they created that diamond shape that they created by doing that Looks a lot like this, doesn't it? Now, what is this? We know this as the Freemason symbol. Freemasons. Right. Okay. So that's very interesting. Here you've got the square down here on the bottom. And you've got your, uh, what do they call They call this a, a compass? This part of it here. I've forgotten the name of this piece uh, on the top. But boy, does that does that look an awful lot like that? Again, we don't know exactly how they derived at that, but boy, that's uh, pretty interesting, isn't it? And Linda, I think she is on. I think she is on one more time this year, Jeff. I yeah, believe. They, yeah, I think I think she is because they said something about that on the show last night. Um, so anyway, again, something very interesting, and and I want to get more information on this um, to find out what more we can, uh, you know get out of that. I'd love to be able to talk to Aaron. Aaron, if you, <laughs> I'd love to talk to you sometime offline. I know you uh, are not uh, the, the compass and the square. Uh, thank you, Deidre. Um, I'd love for you to talk with us sometime about it. I know you uh, aren't real hot on the idea of coming on the show, which is fine. I understand that completely, but boy, I'd love to love to get more information about how um, using the lead cross uh, with the square to come up with that. I really would love to understand that more. I'm the, not, the where, the what, the how, the why, and everything exactly, else. Exactly right. Yeah, that was that was really, really uh, good stuff. I would love to get more information on it um, because I'm, I'm very intrigued. I really, really am intrigued, and I know a lot of the members are, are and too. She presents such a good, she, she's such a good presenter, and mm -hmm. she you can tell she believes in what she's saying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, she's totally on board with it, which is, it, it, it allows me to be more convinced by it as well. Because to have her have that much uh, faith in it uh, really, really pushes that on to me. Boy, we're getting close to two hours here, folks, and I'm really sorry about that. I know there's there's still some more I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'll try not to uh, push it too fast here, but I uh, hope you're – I don't even know how many people are still here. Hopefully, there's anybody still <laughs> watching. Um, there is uh, a little bit more that I'd like to kind of cover um, to see if uh, – of the show last night. And this is um, looking at, 
Oh, when they went out uh, in the in the water, uh, they started off the uh, the episode uh, six. They started off with the uh, drilling. They were drilling. Uh, they, I think they called it H five point five. Uh, Terry Matheson was out there, and um, they were uh, talking about uh, drilling down in there and how much. Um, you still have a team one on. Okay. Um, they were talking about the fact that, and this is this was really really interesting to me, that they need to go deeper, um, and that's that's you know it, it, when they were doing the drilling, you know I kept thinking they said they talk about hitting bedrock, oh we've hit bedrock we got to stop, and they would they would pull back up, and 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 they wouldn't go any further, and I'm thinking well, what's below the bedrock, why can't we go why can't do is your drill not capable of going through that is the case on not being able to dig through that why why what's below the bedrock and in my brain again it's one of those things i'm thinking below the bedrock wouldn't that be a better place to have a, a tunnel underneath it I, I don't know but that's exactly what they were talking about now we get um now we get terry matheson was talking about the fact that uh they do want to go deeper that they haven't really gone deeper before um, and they really need to go down as far as like 220 feet. He's talking now get through that bedrock. And he talked about an opening in the bedrock and getting down there and looking below it. So that's what I'm all on board with that. I'm like, yes, let's go. Let's get down there. So, um, we're going to, we're going to see more about that. I think as time goes along here, we're going to see more, um, you know, about drilling down a little bit deeper like that. And finding some up, I had a, another picture here that I wanted to show you. And this is, this was shown on the uh, drilling down episode. Um, this was shown on the drilling down episode leading into season eight on the premiere night of the, the uh, two episodes back to back. And the drilling down was before it. This is, a, and I know it looks like a big mess on this picture here, but this was the, uh, a look at from all the all the uh, positions of all the drilling holes that they put into the money pit area, um, and they were saying how much of a deviation, um, how much of a deviation that these drills, when they're going down there, how much it will deviate off and bend off to the side, and won't go straight down because of rocks or whatever, or harder earth or whatever shoots it off to the side. I think Vanessa called that walking, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, thank you. Yes, it was. It was called walking, and it would walk away. Now, the other pictures that they had shown on this drilling down episode was this here. That one was the top, showing more toward the surface. That's this one here, okay? They're all looking pretty straight, going down in there, and there's some of the bigger caissons you can see in here as well. And all these smaller ones are all the small four-inch pipe or six-inch pipe that they're doing, okay? But look at down deeper. Okay, now we're here. This is 125 feet, 150 feet, 175. And look how much some of these have walked. I mean, some of these have bent a long way. And not only that, but look down here, 175 feet. How many of them even reached to 200? Only a couple have even gone that deep. Okay, and did they hit bedrock and they stopped right there? So they need to go deeper? That's what they're talking about doing now. They're talking, well, as of last <clears throat> night, they're talking about going deeper and getting down there and going below 200 feet and seeing if they can find that chamber. So, but you see how much, no, no, I thought this was an interesting picture because you see it like this one here, how much it walked off to the side and didn't go straight down. They completely missed this spot right here. Boom, they missed it. Even though they thought, well, we just drilled here, now we just drilled right here. But this one went whoop, way off to the side. They completely missed it, and none of them go below 200 feet. I thought that was interesting, and now they're going to. So uh, another good thing, and that was on the that was on the. If you get a chance to go back, if you have the app, um, to go back and uh, and see that for yourself, um, and watch that watch that show again, the drilling down. Season eight drilling down that Maddie Blake went out. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting to to see that. So now they're actually talking about doing that and going down below two hundred feet. So I think that's that's a great thing. Um, so and I got a couple more here. Let's see. Hey. 
So, um, let's see. Are you still doing your thing? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So, my fan, um, my fan, my fan, my fan club. <laughs> you got a big fan club, Jack. Absolutely. Um, so, going on from there, um, uh, might be a lateral measurement to another marker. Yeah. Um, so going on from there, um, they talked about uh, uh, Ian Spooner, Dr. Spooner, and uh, Rick got into the uh, little boat, um, the little boat, and they went out into the southeast corner of the swamp, and they got looking around, and they, they, were, they were going out there, and he had his rod. Now, this was taken from some, when he had gone out, uh, was it the first episode of the season? He was out there with Tony Sampson, and Tony was pushing around the little inflatable boat. And, and he was doing a sonar on it. Yes, exactly. And he got all those scans done, and he knew that there was a, a, a flat surface, and then there was a drop-off on the side. So he went out there with Rick, and he was using his probe, and he was probing around the area, and he found that there was, in fact, some sort of a flat ledge and then it dropped off on the sides and they, he put these markers in these stakes in there and he marked it off so they could step back and take a look at it. Like this picture shows here. And they said that it was 20 feet wide by 70 feet long, this flat area. Now there, it sounds like they're pretty well convinced that it's another stone paved area. Um, and we're going to find out in, in upcoming episodes, but I thought that was really significant. And they, we know that they were definitely working this area because Maddie, when Maddie was out there in the drilling down, they kind of blocked it off so they did, couldn't see with the excavator in the way. But they know that there was a big, significant find in this area. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So that. The only funny thing about that, I thought Dr. Sewer was going at head first. If you look at him, when he went over the edge that one time to. He bent way over and he went way down with that bar. I was like, right, he's going to fall right off of that boat. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I even wrote, yeah, and he said, whoa. Uh, I thought the same thing. I said, he's going to fall in the water. I thought this is going to be great. It's going to be like that one of those, uh, the blooper reel, you know, because I thought he was too. I thought he was going to fall in. Uh, let's see. Somebody said here, the ledge for the smaller boat uh, to come ashore. Ledger ships need to stay in the deeper water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, now it's it's also uh, very interesting. Yeah, I know. Yeah, just, Linda was just talking about your family and how supportive. Yeah, they've helped you out with the, your computer and everything. Um, they also uh, have uh, later in the episode they went out on the water with Tony. Tony took one of his boats from uh, um, the uh, the sea his sea tours, um, and he went out onto the water and he took them out with some. They had a they had a uh, they yeah, had three, three sonars if I remember. Yeah, correctly. three sonars. One was a down imaging sonar. One was a side imaging sonar, looking out both ways, and one was a low frequency uh, scans, looking down into the silt and to see what kind of uh, you know logs or rocks or whatever kind of structure might be underneath the silt that's covered up, because they were talking about that silt being pretty thick. Um, and covering up a lot of stuff. So they went out and they did these scans out there and they started off over at uh, Tom Nolan's dock. They launched over there and they started their way around on the north side. As they were doing this, they came across a, um, they came across a, an anomaly in the water. I'm going to see if, uh, okay, there's the rock feature. Oh, this is the rock feature that they found in, in the, in the Southeast corner of the swamp. Um, but it's supposedly like two, 20 feet by 70 feet. Um, oh, there's, I got Carmen Legs pictures coming up here. Hang on, bear with me just a moment. Um, as they were coming around, um, they, they found, uh, a significant feature in the, um, there they are on the dock getting ready to launch. And they found a significant feature out there in the water that, uh, uh Tony had said, look, he said, oh, it could be a cannon. And they, they want to dive on it. Can't wait for that to happen. I think they even doubled back on that one, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They did. Um, matter of fact, I got a picture of it right here. This is where they had gone past that feature um, and that 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 anomaly. And they doubled back and came back and looked at it uh, 
Um, I think they went out a little bit deeper. He was making the swinging around there. One thing I wanted to point out with this picture is they talked about it being off the boulderless beach. And that's this section right here. To my best of my understanding, this is the boulderless beach right here, which is on the north side. This would be Smith's Cove and Isaac's Point over here. And um, and here's the boulderless beach. So this was over still. And, and Nolan's dock would be over here off to the off to the right side of this picture. So that, that anomaly is over here. And supposedly Tony's going to be diving on it. And I can't wait to see what they found down there. So that I thought was really interesting. That was uh, this anomaly right here. Okay. Showing up on the sonar on the, and I guess this would be the down sonar on this one here looking at, I guess this is what that would be uh, showing that anomaly. So that's really interesting there. Um, and then they came around to, um, after that, they went around Isaac's point and they came over to uh, the water just off of uh, the swamp there. And they found this anomaly that they said was about eight by eight square anomaly. Now you see here on this picture, uh, the scan of it going, you know, like a wharf, they think it might be some sort of a wharf. Uh, and then this one here, I'm not sure what this represents here, but again, it must be some sort of like a, an anomaly that they were they were calling it a wharf of some sort. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting as well. And I can't, again, I can't wait to see when they dive on that. But one of the things that I wanted to, to show too was this is a picture of the island that Dr. Spooner had. And he's, and this is from, this is what the shoreline would have looked like in 1600 AD, okay? Um, and so you see how much, the sea level would have been lower and how much more land would be there, um, uh, be visible above water. And over here on this side, now this would be the swamp right in here, okay? And right off the swamp, the southeast corner right here, you see this ledge of land that's much higher than the, than the surrounding water area. And this right here is a little square area that I think was what they saw on there, I think. Is what they saw on their scans from the boat, this little square right here. And so if that's the case, then, you know, I can't wait to see when they dive right here and find out that this could, this looks like it would have been pretty deep water right here leading up to this ledge. So if there was a wharf here, ships would definitely be able to come in and it would tie back to the same thing if they were talking about the ox cart path leading from there up to the uh, rock feature in lot 15. Coming when you think about Smith's Cove, they found the same thing in Smith's Cove. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was all buried under, it was underwater, but was that up above mm -hmm. 300 years ago or so? Exactly. And it very well could be because you're talking about, uh, you know, maybe seven feet uh, difference in, in uh, the water levels there. So uh, could be, yeah, somebody said it could be a main harbor. And I think you're right. I think it very well could have been. And that's over on the same side where you would be able to also take that use that ox, ox path, uh, cart path over to the money pit area if you were unloading a ship. So I think there's going to be some really, really interesting stuff coming up with this whole area here. And the fact that there could have been a wharf, ships would be able to, the deeper water here, this dark blue, the deeper water here could very well mean that ships would have been able to pull up here and offload. They would be able to get their pine tar and to repair any boats. They'd be able to get to the money pit with the path right there. They'd be able to venture off into the swamp for the blue clay with the paved roadway there. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, it sure sounds like, uh, it sure sounds like they're, they're on the right path with this, this whole path, you know, this whole thing here. I, I, I think it very well could be. Um, it seems like a major operation that they had going. It does. Out that it really does. Now, this could very well be British because they did talk about that the ox shoes that they found uh, were British. He saw, thought they were British. Uh, Carmen Legg said he thought they were British military. So it could have just simply been British ships that were coming in and out here, and they were using this as a place to repair them. So. Um, I, I think so. And, and somebody just said that I think they were getting to the meat and potatoes of things. I think you're right. I think we are. Um, they're very interesting. I, I just I, I wanted to point this out, too, because I thought this all. I think they're getting to the point where it's all starting to add up, at least this part of it anyway. Now, this would the British would be 
uh, that I hope they could come up with a good time frame for this because if these are the British ships coming in, we know that was about the time that the uh, the that the uh, Revolutionary right, War maybe happened. The seventies, seventies. Right, exactly. Um, so, what about what was happening before then? We don't know, but you know, again, they're really starting to to add some stuff up. Um, so anyway, interesting stuff. I, I just wanted to, to point that out as well. And here's another picture of that that they were looking at. And you can see, again, on this picture here, you can see that area right here where they think their wharf might be and the deeper water right alongside of it. So a ship would be able to come in. And I believe the galleon, some of those ships didn't have a deep keel, did they? They were more round-bottomed, weren't they? They know they had a keel on them, but I don't know how deep it was to be able to come into this area. Can't but anyway, I can't help you with that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I need somebody with the more of a knowledge of that sort of stuff. Uh, um, yeah, somebody said could have been used by different people at different times. Uh, the location passed down through history. Absolutely, that's absolutely I mean, could could be true. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, this could be going from Temple of Street on through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it really could be. And they could have simply said, oh, look, there's somebody used this for kind of like a dock. We can use this too and built it back up after it started to come apart or something or, you know, whatever. And they built it back up. Um, one other thing I just wanted to point out too. And again, you know, if you if you look at this, and I know, again, this is me stepping on a ledge, uh, merchant ships bringing in supplies, yep, is the fact that if the water level was that much lower and Xena's map, I, and I brought this up on an earlier show that Zena's map, if it's true, if it's true, and it's dated 1347, it shows the island as one island, not two separate islands. Now, Dr. Spooner had found that piece of wood in the stone paved way up by the eye of the swamp, and he dated that to about, was it 12? 12, 1220. 1220, thank you. Okay, so... That he's saying that that was that that at least that stone payway was made about 1220. And if the water level was that much lower, was it really two islands or was it always one island? Uh, I don't know, I, at least at that point. So, uh, there's a I, I really need to I want to try to get more information about that and talking about the swamp. And was it really two islands that they filled up? It would have to have been done prior to 220, 12, 1220. So I don't know. And if the water levels were that much lower, wouldn't that be dry ground there? I guess it would have to put in a lot of dirt there to fill that up because the water level would have been that much lower, seven feet, possibly lower or more, eight feet at that point. So I don't know, something to think about, but it's something that, uh, yeah, somebody says one island. I'm kind of leaning more towards one island as well, but I don't know. I, I could be, I could be completely wrong on that. So. So anyway, that's kind of wrapping it up there, folks. I I, uh, I wanted to uh, try to go over the, the shows and give a little bit more discussion on it. And I thank you so much for you guys coming on here and adding your uh, spin to it as well. Um, okay, somebody said, oh, Linda's saying a Spanish galleon sat around 12 to 15 feet uh, in, the in, the, in the water loaded. Okay, so that's not that deep. You think about it, that's not that deep. That area over there on the north side of the island where they found the anomaly, he said, Tony, if I remember correctly, Tony, you said that was 30 feet of water. Is that what I caught on? Uh, you know, I was trying to catch that. And I think you said that was 30 feet of water. Yeah. And I know that this most of this area here in the south shore is, is shallow. It's pretty shallow. It doesn't go that deep. But could they have brought a galleon up at least pretty close to that area? I don't know. Hopefully we're going to find out in upcoming uh Upcoming episodes here, we're going to find out more about that. Does the darker color in the map indicate deeper water in the geographical feature or a geographical feature? I think it means deeper water, personally, but I don't know. I could be wrong. But you see over here also where this ledge here and you see where it drops off. I think that's a drop off into deeper water, personally. Uh, early 1600s, uh, there were smaller yet, might have been 10, okay, 10 foot draft. Uh, right. So, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, so anyway, folks, that's uh, that's pretty much what I got for tonight, and um, lots of stuff that uh, I thought last night's show was really a good show. I, I gained a lot of information from it. Um, so uh, I and and I and it, it it leads to more, but they are it leads to more questions. But again, it uh, it really they they are starting to put the pieces together, at least on this area here and the swamp. 
I can't wait to see what this feature is that they found in the swamp. And I know we're going to get more on that coming up here soon. So, but anyway, folks, I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. That's what makes this so fun to be able to exchange ideas with everybody. I really appreciate this. I have more than I you enjoy know. it, Jeff, every week with you with yep. Linda and, yep. our, and our members. I mean, it's, it's fun. It is. It's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. And I'm, and I'm so glad to have you, Jack and Linda out there and Jan, thank you again for doing your synopsis. Awesome work. Uh, it's fantastic to have somebody give us a recap like you did. That's great. I really, really do appreciate it. Repeat. And we appreciate all you members out there and all the good stuff that you bring to our discussion of the curse of Oak Island. Fantastic stuff. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jan. You guys all have a good night and let's look forward to next week and we'll have another show next Wednesday. And we got some more guests coming up that we've already scheduled some guests coming up for January after the holidays. I don't want to get have too many more guests before the holidays because we got just, you know, a lot of pre preparation to do for the holidays. And I hope you all have a good holiday. Um, we'll be on again next Wednesday night after the Tuesday night show and we'll take it from there. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much for being here.